I think if I was to ask anyone what their favourite zombies map of all time was, most people would put Drazendraki in their top 5. Top 3, maybe the best out of the bunch. For me, I've always had three different ones that could come number 1 at either time, and that is Shadows of Evil, Drazendraki, and Mob of the Dead. Sometimes Origins as well, depended on how I'm feeling. But for me, Drazendraki, depending on what day of the week it is, is the best zombies map ever. There are many different reasons as to why this is. The gameplay, Easter eggs, storyline, the wonder weapons, the pack-a-punch camo, the dragon heads are cool. I was about to say the boss, which is the panzer. Maybe we'll leave him out. Although, very cool looking, a little bit annoying. There are so many good gameplay elements, so many features, so many Easter eggs as well. Back in the old days in quotation marks of zombies, when we did used to get a ton of Easter eggs in each map, Dresden Dracker had loads and also a lot of really good ones as well. The plunger being one of them, the skeletons, and also the story. Richtofen, Dr. Groff, which of course ultimately led to us blowing up the moon. I also forgot the intro cutscene, which is pretty cool. The ending cutscene, which is emotional. Yeah, this map, all round, everything in it, it's, it's a masterpiece. I've previously done videos summing up other zombies maps. I've recently done Shangri-La, but also Nectar and Totin, Verrucked, Alpha Omega. If you want to check any of those videos out, if I remember, I will link them down in the description. But today I want to talk about Dryzen Dracker, what makes this map so great, and go through the three main points of any map, and that is gameplay, Easter eggs and storyline. So starting off with the gameplay and this is something I don't really talk about in this section and that is how beautiful this map is. Just because I think it's so stunning compared to any other map that we have and we have some really good ones. I think Shadows of Evil in its own right is very good looking, so is Mob of the Dead, but Dresden Dracker in terms of aesthetics tops it. The whole idea of a castle in the mountains or on top of a mountain in Austria, the snowy setting, the village down in the background, the blue tint and aura we have to this map, not only because of the time of day and the weather, but also element 1 and 5, giving off a blue glow all around the map, the giant lying in the background. Overall, it is just a very, very pretty map. But also something that's quite unique about Dryzen Dracker, but also at the same time, it isn't, is that this map very smartly uses elements from loads of other zombies maps in ways that you might not recognise. Now, if this happened in any other circumstance in zombies, we'd just complain about Treyarch reusing assets. But the way they've done it in Dryzen Dracker, for example, there are so many elements in this map from Origins, the Wonder Fizz, the Panzer, the giant robot in the background, the four bows being relatively similar to the four staffs. This map also takes features from Mob of the Dead, such as the dragon heads on the wall. In Mob, we had the Severus heads. Another map it uses features from is Moon, with the gravity lifts and the low gravity area in the crypt, also Ascension. Dresden Dracker takes some of the best features from other zombies maps and reuses them in a way that you don't really recognise. Besides from the Panzer, even though one of his abilities has changed, that's about it. Maybe the dragon heads as well. But all of this is what makes this map so good. Having the dragons come alive on the wall, you having to feed them, and then them turning back to stone in order for you to get the bow. That's extremely cool. I can remember seeing that for the first time all the way back in 2016, I think it was when this map released. How awesome that was to see. This map feels almost magical. Talking a little bit more about other gameplay aspects, the boss, the Panzer Soldat, a very, very cool character. Although annoying, I don't think he's quite as bad as the one we saw in Origins. Although I think some of that might just be because of the modern Origins, how we got slowed down by that. If there was no mod in that map, we could have a fair comparison. The only real difference between the two, though, is the fact that the Panzer in Derizen Dracker has had his rotating claw replaced by an arm cannon that shoots basically what our shot charges. He still has his usual flamethrower, and because Derizen Dracker is a little bit more tighter than Origins, you do have to be more careful, but the Panzer is still a pretty cool boss, so I couldn't imagine it without him. Talking about the wonder weapons then, the bow, Wrath of the Ancients, like I said earlier, in order to get this, it's pretty simple, well the standard version anyway, all you've got to do is feed the three dragon heads, however there are four different upgraded versions of this you can get, which is the Storm Bow, the Fire Bow, Electricity, or the Demon Gate, as it's actually called. All four bows are very good, pretty similar in the way they look in terms of elements to the Origin staffs, although some slightly different. I'm gonna be honest, when I play Dryzen Dracker, I never really tend to go for the bows that much when I'm just playing casually because you do have to do some annoying steps for some of them to get them, although they're worth it. I suppose it just depends on how high you want to go up in the rounds. And I always appreciate maps that give us four different wonder weapons, so when you're playing more than one player, each of you can not only actually get a wonder weapon for yourself, but you can also have 
different ones so you can combine them together and just make it feel like each person has a different role to play. You could also say we had another wonder weapon although technically it's not it's a special weapon and that was the Ragnarok DG4. We were first introduced to these in Dries and Draken in fact they were so good and popular that they came back as special weapons in BO4. We all know how these work we've seen them enough times by now these are Richtofen's weapons. Takio in BO4 had the katana, I think Nikolai's was the flamethrower and Dempsey's was the death machine and so Richtofen being my favourite character the fact that we got to use his weapon made this map even better. And the final weapon per se we had was the rocket shield, although we did see that first in Shadows of Evil, so technically it wasn't new, but it was still there. Another thing I like about Doraz and Draka's gameplay was the pack-a-punch system, simply because it was one of the easier ways to pack-a-punch within zombies, especially BO3. If we look at the pack-a-punch system on some maps, it can be a little bit tiring, but all we had to do on Doraz and was press the interactive button on three different pack-a-punch locations or technically two and when you went to the third one that's where the pack-a-punch would appear because the map is relatively big and there are multiple different sections you could complain that the pack-a-punch in some cases depending on where you were could be far away but because of how easy it is to travel around this map using either the 115 shoot or the jump pads that are located all around the map or there's also a teleporter it's not bad i think that concludes pretty much all of the gameplay elements that i thought were outstanding about Horizon. but yeah overall i can't really think of one negative aspect in terms of gameplay about this map and that's unusual because in every other instance even shadows of evil mob of the dead some of the best maps of all time origins i could at least think of one but for Horizon, i'm struggling maybe the panzer it's a hard one just because it's pretty much a perfect map as we go to easter eggs we have quite a few the first one which i mentioned earlier is the plunger this is a unique unlockable melee weapon you can get in Dryzen. we also have like on every zombies map the musical easter egg like normal all you have to do is find the three teddy bears located on the map press the interactive button on them and the song dead again will begin to play there is also another musical easter egg which plays a modified version of samantha's lullaby all you have to do to activate this one is pressing the button on samantha's musical box in a bedroom there's also a third musical easter egg which can be activated by going up to three different gramophones you can find around the map and there is a disco easter egg which also comes under the same category where if you shoot the moon globe and then shoot the rocket next to it disco lights will begin to shine throughout the room and you will hear 80s music so Dorizon has four different musical easter eggs it's also got a bunch of ciphers documents and radios you can find but for me one of my favorite easter eggs was the skeletons one where if you shoot three different invisible skulls and do a few other steps this isn't a guide the zombies end up turning into skeletons there are so many cool and unique easter eggs on this map it's just another reason why it was so good and then finally we have the storyline i have done a full video explaining the entire ether story if you haven't already seen that for some reason go ahead and check it out on the channel but just giving you a quick summary the whole premise of this map is essentially us destroying griffin station on the moon and how do we do that we send all of the rockets at dry and Dracker castle up to the moon where we 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 blow it up. We also rescue Ultimus Dempsey in his pod before turning off his life support and then collecting his soul with inside of the summoning key. It's a very important and for me on BO3, my favourite part of the storyline, probably just after the giant. The intro cutscene on that map for me is just top tier. But everything overall, gameplay, easter eggs and story is amazing. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.